Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, don't be misled. Understanding the confusion surrounding material data comparisons. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a senior market development engineer for Rogers Corporation Advanced Circuit Materials Division. Today I'm going to talk about the topic of uh, don't be misled and specifically understanding the confusion that uh, sometimes occurs when looking at comparisons between high frequency laminates. Now this topic is a very vast topic. There are a lot of variables, a lot of things to consider. Uh, and I'm just going to go through some of the more obvious things uh, that I've ran into in regards to insertion loss. Again, many different topics. Maybe that will be a different Coonrod's Corner, but today is going to be insertion loss and I'm going to look at a comparison between two different high frequency materials. So recently, uh, more companies in the high frequency laminate industry have been doing more comparison studies. And uh, from that, we've been seeing some information that is uh, what we would consider somewhat misleading. Uh, thankfully, Rogers has a very high regard for data quality, and uh, we're always willing to share the data that we collect and also the methods we use to collect that data. Now, uh, I'll take the next few minutes to talk about a material comparison that was done recently on a webinar a few months ago in May of 2014. And it was uh, another material supplier comparing to one of our Rogers uh, materials, which is the RL3003 materials. Now, the graph that they show was valid at the frequency and the uh, different things they were showing at that time. However, when you look at more details at the valuation, you find that there's more to the story than what was just being shown. Instead of actually using some comparative uh, information from the internet that's in public domain, I decided to go ahead and use data that I've collected on circuits that we've made ourselves. Uh, that way I can ensure the accuracy of the results. Now the following slide is a overview of the first part of this study. The uh, slide is showing a comparison between two materials, a, uh, another high frequency laminate materials and our 5 mil thick RO3003 with the standard ED copper. And you can see in this range of uh, the scale and also the range of frequencies, these materials do look uh, very similar. Uh, and uh, that is actually correct and that's valid data. However, it's a little more interesting when you uh, look at these materials and how they compare across a wider range of frequencies. This particular material supplier, uh, prior to showing the similar graph, uh, they were explaining this material would be used at higher millimeter wave frequencies uh, and suggesting 70 gigahertz and 77 gigahertz. However, what I thought was interesting was they were showing data only to 20 gigahertz. So that prompted me to do a study at a little bit higher frequency and see what the responses were. And you can see in the following slide uh, the, ex the, uh, the chart of the insertion loss going to higher frequencies. So on this slide is the insertion loss of the same circuits, the same materials, except now I'm being tested, now I'm testing these circuits to a much higher frequency going out to 70 gigahertz. And you can see as the original slide suggested or the original picture suggested, the data is valid where there's a good comparison of these materials up to 20 gigahertz. But once you get out around the millimeter wave range of 30 uh, gigahertz or more, then you start seeing some separation in performance. And even out at about 67 to 70 gigahertz, now you really can see a significant difference in insertion loss where the RO3003 materials have much lower insertion loss and perform much better than the uh, other competitive materials. Additionally, the, um, the competitor also mentioned the 3003 material data that was shown in the insertion loss curve was using rolled copper, which was actually incorrect. Uh, I went ahead and made circuits with the 3003, the RO3003, and uh, had rolled copper uh, on the laminate, made circuits, and applied it to the same type of insertion loss testing. So the results in the, uh, the slides show that the RO3003 materials with the rolled copper perform much, much better than the, uh, the other materials. And uh, you can see at higher frequencies, 70 gigahertz, the performance is absolutely outstanding. So a, another good comparison would be to look at these same circuits with a thicker substrate, and thicker substrates are less sensitive to the copper roughness concerns, and the, and the copper types will be less meaningful. So now you're looking more at the substrate properties. So I made circuits on these same materials with 10 mil thick substrates, and the following graph shows these results. The insertion loss shown here is, again, microstrip transmission line circuits. And it is testing, in this case, out to 20 gigahertz because I also wanted to show the response at lower frequencies. And it's clear to see that as you go thicker in the substrate, the benefits of the RO3003 
uh, shine very bright and they show that there is quite a difference between these materials and the other materials. And that's really to do to the fact that we are now looking more at the substrate properties and less of the effects of the copper roughness. A uh, good material comparison really should consider three main topics and that is the material thickness, the substrate thickness, the copper type being used, and also the range of frequencies to be evaluated. This concludes this episode of Coonrod's Corner and thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.